and I'm Foolish Gypsy from Vet Life. This is one of my submissive Sky's Kitten. And my lifestyle daughter, Lady Blue Scales. Today we're starting a journey with YouTube videos explaining the mysterious violet wand with all its different attachments that we have available to us. As I've seen in my local community, there are lots of people who are curious about the wand but are very scared of it at the same time. Mostly because they just have no access to one. While looking on YouTube, I found no videos that were available to help alleviate these fears. So I have decided to find my own remedy of this and create my own. We're going to be having a series of videos, one of which will be the history of the violet wand, what it was used for starting from the 1900s all the way to today, both in the kink community, which we all know, as well as the beauty, beauty world with anestheticians and beauticians. They have been using this for the past few years to help with skin care, as well as doctors have been using it to find different cures to mysterious illnesses that no one knew how to face until much recently in the history of medicine. I hope you enjoy the videos and can't wait to see any questions you may have. So if you're like me, you probably have gone online, put Violet Wand into a search engine, and found probably about diddly squat, maybe a few videos, probably of the girl with the chain being dangled on her boobs and she's giggling doll hell and back, but no information. Or you may have found Violet Wanda's Violet Wand Guild with some of their information. I know that's what I found, and I scoured the internet for days. Then at one point, my daughter Lady Blue Scales decided to become an anesthetician. She was telling me about this wonderful little toy that she was learning about skincare with. Look that up. Hi, information! <laughs> The high frequency machine is also known as the violet ray machine, which outputs um, energy into the air causing ozone, but also helps with your skin. This machine is what we call in the kink community the violet wand. And while there are differences between each one, they're very similar all together. Some of the differences include whether or not it's a mechanical wand, which is the traditional violet wand from the 1900s. This was a miniature Tesla coil. There's the modern day version of the exact same equipment called a solid state. A solid state wand uses computer electronics to create the exact same effect as the Tesla coil. The solid state is what's being used by people like Lady Blue Scales. Hello. So some of us already know a little bit about the violet wand from the kink community. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us from the anesthetician's view? From an anesthetician, which an anesthetician is a skincare and cosmetic specialist, um, we specialize in taking care of the skin and helping to prevent any sort of problems. Um, what the violet wand, as you know it as, can do is it can help to revitalize the skin. It's also been known to help treat things like psoriasis, and uh, in some cases it has been shown to actually help with fibromyalgia, which is an electrical issue within the body. Um, these Hey, doctors <laughs> were right about a few things in the 1900s. Exactly. One of the things I was able to find was a owner's manual from the original violet ray machines from the 1900s. And they were claiming that it could cure psoriasis, thrush and infants. Yes, I said infants. No, I don't know what they were thinking. Seizures, everything you could possibly imagine. But the one thing they were right about was the skin. So, hey, they knew something. <laughs> You once told me when you were looking at my kid that all the um, all the equipment is the same. Is that true? Essentially, yes. All of the glass heads that you would be attaching to the violet wand itself to create that current, it's pretty much the same thing. It just can, it runs on a higher voltage level. I've noticed, which is understandable. This isn't you're not treating your skin; you are treating your kink, for lack of a better phrase. For the few of us who would understand the technical aspects. A mechanical violet wand, which is the Tesla coil, runs up to 40 
40 volts. Restate that sentence so we can always edit it back in. The mechanical violet wand will work up to 40 volts. A solid state wand for the kink community works up to 15. The anestheticians, from what I've been able to find, work up to 10. So each one has, it, it has its limit. Obviously for the anesthetician, she wouldn't need it as far up as what we need it as because they're not going for the, for the physical stimulation, they're just going for the topical. Legally speaking, we're not actually allowed to use anything higher other, you know, because it can be a danger to anyone who's got any sort of heart problems or anything like that. Which in both worlds from what I've seen, that is something you need to make sure if you are going into a scene, make sure you've made them aware if you have any heart problems, if you have any metal plating, any sort of like, any kind of metal in your body anywhere that you cannot remove, you need to make them aware of these factors because it can be dangerous. Um, I even removed my wedding band. My wedding band is titanium, which does not have a very good conductivity, but it can conduct if scratched. I removed my titanium wedding band today. I have no jewelry whatsoever, not even um, a typical chainmail collar that I wear. And the zipper that you see on my top, there is actually a flap protecting my skin from the zipper. So there's no metal touching my body while we are doing these videos. If you are wanting to enter a scene, please be very honest if you have a pacemaker, a heart murmur, anything of that sort, um, any sort of arrhythmias, which means your heart isn't beating correctly. These are things that can be highly dangerous in a scene. Yes, I have been told by a paramedic in Polk County, Florida, that a solid state violet wand is safe if you have a conduction issue of your heart with the terms that it doesn't go near your chest. I'm sorry, these are very, they're, they're very playful things. This area right through here is very lovely to zap. If I can't work with the whole body, it's not as much fun. So yes, I have done it on somebody's arms so they can have the experience and know what it feels like with my solid state, but they do realize that a scene is not safe for them as well as it's definitely not safe at all if they are working with a mechanical violet wand, it should not be an option. Same with pregnant women. Wait nine months, ladies. It's not worth the potential health risk to you or worse yet to the infant. Taking into consideration that the embryonic fluid that that baby is surrounded in is highly conductive. Like we're talking ridiculously conductive because it is mostly water. And as we know, water is very conductive and you need to be aware that you can very well bake that bun in the oven. Um. I'm currently in school for healthcare, and one of the labs I had to do was an EKG. An EKG measure, measures the energies around the heart and what causes it to pump. I had done a scene a couple of days prior, not thinking anything of it. I was actually hooked up to the wand for probably close to three hours between each girl, a total of three hours. I went into school on Monday, had the EKG done, it was a very interesting read. My professor wanted me rushed into the emergency room. I knew that I had just been hooked up to a violet wand, so it was creating a backlash onto my own circulatory system. That was perfectly fine. It's literally electrifying. I was quite literally electrified. Now, my EKG readings were not dangerous. I was not in any health risk, but they were abnormal for a 26-year-old female who rides a bicycle 10 miles a day every day. And that was why my professor was worried. Which is why I'm telling you, if you have heart issues, you may not want to consider this as a toy. Can you think of anything else you would like to tell us? Um, just be very honest, you know, even if you, even if you do have these heart problems and you don't, you know, you and the person that's, you know, going to be in the scene with you doesn't feel comfortable, that doesn't mean we're not going to love you. It's just, it's a health problem. We'd rather be safe than have you have to be rushed to the ER. Exactly. Well, 
I hope you found this information um, useful. If you want to have more reading, go to Violet Wanda's website, which is known as the Violet Wand Guild, and they have materials galore on there. And I really hope those help you. And if you have any questions that we didn't necessarily speak about here, please send me a message on FetLife. My name is Fool's Gypsy. It will be in the credits. And let us know what you would like to know. Hey there! So you saw our first few videos most likely about the Violet Wand, what it was, what it is today. Now we're going to be talking about the different electrodes. An electrode is the actual glass portion. It's very similar to a neon bulb. To give you an idea. These are the parts that hook directly into the violet wand, which are used onto the bottom, whether it's submissive, slave, whatever you want to, whatever term you want to use. These parts are the more calmer areas of the toy. Different toys will feel like different things. You might think this is a very scary implement compared to this. This is actually the nicer one. How electricity works is it likes to take the smallest and most direct path to whatever surface it's conducting to, just like lightning. So this area has a very nice broad area. It goes directly onto the skin. Big area of contact. This you only actually touch with the very point. So this is a bit sharper of a feeling. What we're going to do is with the very lovely Sky's Kitten, I'm going to introduce each electrode to you and then we're going to touch it onto her and she is going to tell you what she feels. So this isn't just going to be like reading it in a book. Also as I mentioned in the introduction in History of the Violet Wand, these are all tools that are used for skin care. So we're also going to be hearing from Lady Blue Scales what these different tools and equipment are used for. <laughs> As I said in my previous video, there are two different types of violet wands out there. There is the mechanical violet wand, which is a mini Tesla coil, and then there is the solid state, which is actually a computer generated Tesla coil, which is a lot smaller. One of the benefits of the solid state is this does not have the heating issue that the mechanicals do. Which means I can run this almost for an indefinite amount of time versus a mechanical it can only run for about 30 minutes before it starts getting hot. We're going to start with the nicest of the electrodes which is called the mushroom. Mushroom has a broad area of contact which has it with the lowest amount of feeling. If we were doing skin care, the mushroom would be used for... This would be used more for massaging around the face area. Um, it's because it's broader, it's not going to give as sharp, as she was explaining before, as sharp of a, a feeling. Um, this again would be great for stimulating of cell turnover rate, which helps depression, you know, skin cells, you know, kind of help to kill any sort of bacteria that's lying within the skin that can cause acne and things like that. Generally, you would lay over gauze before you would actually do it to keep from skin to, sk skin to glass contact. Now something to keep in mind, an anesthetician's solid state is a weaker solid state than what I am using. For kink purposes, do not touch the face. Do not touch nose, do not touch eyeballs, do not touch cheeks, do not touch mouth. Do not touch the head. <laughs> this is also because the skin on your face is different from the rest of your body, where it's a lot thicker, there are more layers. There are the layers up here on your face as well, but they are a lot thinner. You know, the, the flesh on the, it's on the inside of your cheek, there's only, you know, so much muscle, fat, and your skin dividing it. So you have a, a higher risk of, you know, shocking them at a dangerous point. So for this, we're not going anywhere above, I may touch the throat itself, but nothing actually from the chin up. If you're also noticing right now it's off as I'm holding it here, the second I'm turning it on, I don't really touch there anymore, it will bite me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like bites in that manner. Now this room is actually very dark, I have it that way, so you can see the pretty light. You also notice you can probably hear almost like a static sound that is actually static electricity. Just like if you were to walk outside right now with it starting to rain, you would hear the sounds of all the air molecules around the electric lines. 
very similar. Now, I'm actually going to test this to myself. I always like to do that because I want to know what it's something that's about to feel. This is at a very low, low setting. So I'm going to touch right here on your shoulder. What does that feel like? Barely kind of feels like anything, um, if at all. It, you know how when your hair stands on ends and something kind of brushes up against them? That's just about what it feels like. This is at slightly of a higher intensity. What I'm using to change it is actually a knob right here. I'm moving my finger to move it. So this is a little bit stronger. It almost feels like somebody taking almost like a light paintbrush or something like that and stroking it down my arm. It's very light, but it still kind of has a little tiny, tiny bit of a tingle but it's not noticeable. This is a little bit stronger. You also notice the sound is getting louder as I'm turning it up. This actually feels more along the lines of somebody actually taking like the lead out of a mechanical pencil and dragging it down my arm. It's a little sharper, a little stronger, but again, it's very tolerable. <laughs> now we start getting into the <laughs> um, At this point, um, it feels more along the lines of actually, yeah, somebody tickling you um, with nails. <laughs> kind of like someone's like lightly grazing their nails. Lightly grazing their, nail, their nails, yes. That actually made the hair <laughs> kind of stand up. Um, <laughs> that one feels a, a lot stronger than the first one, much stronger than the first one, but it has a little bit more of a bite to it. Not, again, not intolerable, not painful, just different. It, that's what it is. It's just different sensation. It does feel a little more of a bite. I think something that could be noted for first time users who've never been around a uh, violet wand before, who've never had it touched on them, this sound can be very intimidating. Yes. Um, for anyone who's ever had a tattoo before, it's very similar to that sound to me. So, because um, I know each person reacts a little differently, but honestly, it's it's not painful. It's just shocking. <laughs> <laughs> this is now is at full power for my wand, which it maxes out at around 15 volts. So this is what it would feel like with the mushroom. You can see her jump just slightly. Yeah, jump from not expecting it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, with the electrode, it, it's very minimal, very... I mean, it's still nothing over the top, over the edge. I'm sitting there going, oh gosh, that hurts. No, it just it feels like a light little sting and that's about it. One thing you probably saw behind her is I made sure to turn it all the way down. In fact, I turned it off before I pulled it out. Again, anytime you're touching this, you run the risk of being shocked. And this one, it's not a dangerous shock. It won't send me to the hospital, but it will make me suddenly look at my fingers and go, I was stupid. And I'd rather not do that intentionally. What exactly happens whenever you do, if you were to pull it out before you completely turn it off, what happens? Does the metal shock you to the point of numbness, or...? I've only had it shock to the point where you almost want to drop it, because mm -hmm. it's just, it's an ah, intense. and you don't expect it, you uh -huh. don't realize it. One of the best ways I can explain it is when I was a child, this was probably not something very commonly done. My family was not necessarily the smartest crayons in the box. <laughs> but we taught each other how to test a 9-volt battery, which was you stick out your tongue and you test the 9-volt battery to your tongue. That is about what it feels like if you were to accidentally get shocked, if it's more the shock <coughs> value of that bit me okay. <laughs> more than true pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is actually what's called um, spoon electrode. 
It's a smaller area, which means it's going to be more intense on her. And it's also used in skin care. I'm not sure what it's currently used for. I myself never personally used it uh, because of the way it's shaped. I would imagine it would give more of a pinpoint precision, like working in particularly problematic areas. Probably again working around acne or anything, or any kind of you know, it, more in the deeper part of the acne, as opposed to perhaps surface. Okay. So, for those of you who are scared and really want to know what was used for in the 1900s, this was used on babies to cure thrush of the mouth. For anyone who even says that it still can be used for that, I do not recommend it using on children because they are obviously babies and they're more sensitive to the things around them. So it's definitely a big no-no if you hear of anybody using it on children. It's You probably should report them for that. I, I definitely would or very least speak to them and make sure they realize what they are doing mm -hmm. because it is not something I would suggest. So again, so I'm going to be turning it on. I actually turn it all the way up to high at very first to make sure it's turned on correctly. I'm looking for the for the light. Mine, my light is purple. There are some that are orange, they're blue. You can buy them any color you want. Just, I liked purple. <laughs> okay, this is at very low. Barely anything at all. Um, again, it just feels like um, static electricity rubbing up against uh, my arm, just raising the hairs on my skin. I feel a little bit from the contact. I feel a little tiny bit of a uh, a little nip, but it's not much. This is a little bit higher. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, that one is definitely, um, oh wow, how do you explain that? <laughs> um, it went from the gentle straight up to that, um, like I said, you know, pencil light being drawn down your arm. I mean, because of the smaller point in contact, it's definitely going to feel sharper and more intense the more we got. Is it a little bit stronger? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you still with us? Or you going yeah, to I'm okay. still with you. <laughs> um, that was definitely a little bit more of a bite. Uh, and when I say a bite, it, it, I mean it's not like, you know, like a bee sting or something like that. It's much more subtle. I mean, like she said, you know, sticking your tongue to a 9 volt battery is actually more intense than what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, that's about the 9 volt battery right <laughs> there. <laughs> and actually, if you look closely, I don't know if it's being picked up by the camera, but you can actually see. I'll go ahead and do it to my hand. Um, you can see the actual static coming off the electrode onto the skin. If you go into Spencer's gifts and you see those static balls, that's what we're actually seeing coming from the electrode onto her or myself. And this is at full power. <laughs> Ooh, we got a yip. Yes. <laughs> um, more intense than nine ball battery. My arm is at like yeah, yeah. Do it at once. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like doing two at once pretty much, yeah. But uh, th I still had like a tingle going down my arm from that. But it's not, uh, it doesn't do anything to your muscles. It doesn't make you jerk or anything like that the way an actual full-blown electric shock will. In fact, it can be very stimulating for the muscles. I know uh, when it comes to fibromyalgia, they actually do have a particular um, glass head. It looks kind of like a rake. Uh, what you would do, and this is also used to treat psoriasis, is just comb it through their hair. It also helps to stimulate hair growth. It does take, you know, it's not instantaneous. It will take a couple weeks, a good few sessions to do this. But um, what it's doing is it's stimulating the flesh, it's stimulating the hair follicles. Um, it can be very stimulating for muscles. Um, you know, I don't specialize in any kind of muscle care, so that's something you'd want to talk to um, probably a dermatologist or you know 
somebody who's more trained in that and it's one of those fields but I do know for a fact it'd be really good for you know hair growth so men if you're getting a little little bald up there women too it happens it does happen all right this is actually one of the lean beasties this is what's called a ballpoint probe it is a very small area of contact it's about the head of a pen it's very small it's very direct I almost never ever go full power with this because it's so much more intense. I do know this actually you also use some skin care. By the yes. way, just remember how I mentioned it was starting to rain? Apparently Thunder has decided to come out and play too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this particular glass head would be used to treat acne and it, because it's so direct it can it gets into the acne itself and it kills the bacteria like oh, oh, instantly and by the end of the day you will probably it'll kind of feel hard and it almost becomes like what's called a milia um or, and what that is is it's kind of um like a hard grainy thing that's you know dead skin cells you know the sebum which is the stuff that builds up into your pores and what you would essentially what will happen is it'll either fade away or you just kind of scratch at it and it'll just kind of pop out and it just looks like a little grain of sand it's also really good for getting in there for that really deep acne that's not on the surface. It's just it's the kind that you just can't seem to get rid of. Using something like this can help to kill the bacteria, bring it to the surface, and then it can be removed. All right, so this is actually very low power. You can't even hear it buzz. That's like feather light. Yeah, that one's better light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pro probably closer to like the mushroom feel that you're getting. Yes, it's very, very much closer to the mushroom feel, like the starting out of the mushroom. It's like a little brush of a feather. Did you just do that? It's me. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a bit more of a uh, longer sting, longer. Um, we've gone straight to the whole, you know raking thing down my arm at this point. Like somebody taking a nail and dragging it down my arm. Which if you recall with the other ones it took longer to get to that point. Again, more direct, more feeling. Definitely not something you would want to use on a beginner who's never had this done because it's so intense. Yes. Yeah. Good. That went straight to make up my hair stand on it. <laughs> um yeah, it's it just gets more intense. It's again, it's nowhere like being stung by a bee or a nine volt battery just yet. I know I say that, and it's pushing next, that limit. yeah, it's pushing that limit though. <laughs> I know the next one's gonna be hey nine volt. <laughs> Let's see if you're right. Yeah, nine volt. <laughs> again, if testing the nine volt battery that way, it was something that was done um, in the 80s and 90s. I don't believe it's taught anymore. No. But it is actually safe to do it. Believe it or not, that one is safe. So if you don't necessarily have a violet wand handy, but you want to know what we're talking about with the 9 volt, find yourself a 9 volt ladder and go fit. Oh, you can see it jumping off. Of yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> Um. That's definitely um, like little pinpricks. I mean, like actually stabbing little pinpricks. Okay, this is now at full power. How I would describe this next one would be very similar to a gentle tattoo artist. I know those words shouldn't go together <laughs> for those of us who have tattoos. Tattoo artist. Yeah. But uh, the more gentle, light-handed tattoo artist. Well, shoot, if that's a tattoo artist, I'm going to get me one. <laughs> <laughs> An experienced tattoo artist. Yeah. yeah. The operative word. <laughs> yes. People like um, Cornelius on Set Life, who is an experienced tattoo artist, he did a very special tattoo for me. It is the wedding symbol for my Lord Love and I. His felt very similar to this. He had a very light hand. But yeah, it has a bite, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it definitely has a bite. And that bite, you know, is what definitely gets in there for that acne. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see this definitely being used for acne. 
Need a cheap skincare electrical facial? Punch your local violet wand owner. <laughs> um, by the way, if you notice when I'm pulling out, I'm not twisting anything, I'm directly pulling. Because these are light bulbs, if I were to twist, I can loosen up the light bulb base and I would lose all of my neon gas. And then it wouldn't work. The neon gas, by the way, is where you get that color from when the electricity goes through it. It's that reaction between it. Ooh, bite. <laughs> by the way, remember how I said don't hold it up here? That's, That's why. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, light fuzzy feel. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a sting. Still does the same. This is now at full power. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, that that's the um. That is definitely the whole, you know, hair sitting on in and somebody going really light down your arm. It's like, <laughs> um, For kink wise, this would typically be used on an arm or even between the breast and the cleavage line. And if somebody has nipple piercings, this is very, <laughs> very fun to do to them if they're expecting it. If they are not expecting it, you might be expecting a fist. <laughs> in response. <laughs> now, I myself have never seen this particular glass head before in skincare, so I'm not sure what it would be used for. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is made by kinksters for kinksters. <laughs> um, going back to the 1940s, though, with the original high frequency machine, this was actually used to treat tonsillitis. Oh, so it would be going right along with here. It's actually a throat. So that, that's why it would be arched so that I could just brush along. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But that's where the very scary 1900s medical professionals, and I'm using this term with high respect for what they were doing, not necessarily how they were doing it. Okay. <laughs> but they were trying, and really, medicine has come a long way, even though it's still used today. I myself actually do use it for therapeutic reasons. I have a injured wrist that I have to take care of, and this will actually help me doing treatments every day. I've gone from having no feeling in my hand at all to having increasing feeling day by day with the mm -hmm. treatment. So I can say they were right to be using this medically, just not necessarily for everything. That's what it does. Is it, it's it's not for us stimulating what they thought it would be, but it would be definitely stimulating the nerves, which, you know, returns the feeling to her hand, so that she's able to go, you know, throughout the day knowing that there's some sort of feeling in her hand. Thank <laughs> you. 
monotónia. So by now, we've talked about the different electrodes. Sky's kitten told, has told you what they all feel like from her perspective. And you just watched a miniature scene using only four different electrodes. But none of those could really show you what the arcing looks like, the actual beautiful light display that happens with them. So that's what we're going to do right now. Again, we're going to start with the mushroom, which is the lowest of intensities. Actually, just going to take it all the way up to high. And you can see off of the electrode all the little lightning pricks that are coming off it onto my hand. It also will change just a little bit if I use the hole, or even just the size. Like it was mentioned before, the smaller area of contact, the more directly the feeling. By the way, something I really like about the solid state ones that the mechanicals do not have. You know it's off because there's no light. When it's on, there's a purple light right there. One thing that you'll notice as you play with one is that there becomes a very sweet smelling scent in the air. That's raw ozone. If you ever go outside during a thunderstorm, you'll notice it too. And that's what you're smelling is the ozone that's in the air as the oxygen becomes electrified. Again, you can see fewer arcs. It's a lower, it's a smaller area of concentration, a lot more direct onto my hand. And just like with the lightning, how it will build up, build up, build up, and then release the energy, that's what it's doing here. That's why sometimes it's only an arc or two, and other times it can be four or five. Now this one's going to be a little bit harder to show. It's actually arcing off of both ends simultaneously. You can also arc from the dead center. Or you can even get arcs off the shaft itself with any of these toys. That's why, again, you don't want to hold up here. It will, it will just suddenly arc on you. Which, if you're not expecting it, will give you a wake-up call. Now, I'm sure you're also noticing that the more intense of an area, the more, con the more concentrated it is, I can actually hold the item away from my hand and get the same amount of arcs. And this of course is a very direct, very pinpoint arcing. I don't even have to have it all the way in here. That actually kind of hurts. <laughs> I can have it all the way out here and I can be feeling it perfectly. And it's just like with lightning. It, the energy is building up, all the electrons are moving around, and they finally just shoot off to the closest area of contact. So there are your basics of some of your electrodes. You can buy others, all depending on what you want. Just make sure you play safe. Remove any jewelry you have. If you do have metal in your clothing, if you actually look right here, there's a flap where my zipper is that protects me from the metal on my zipper. 
take off any earrings that you can. And if you have metal plates in your body, just avoid that area if possible. You can get close, but just avoid it. It's better for you. And play safe and play aware. Remember, risk aware of consensual kink. Always a good tip. Bye, everyone.